Okay, hello everyone. In this video and the following video, we will be learning how to use nesting in combination with mapping to execute code across multiple data sets that are bundled together. Uh, specifically, we will be performing individual statistical tests, um, specifically tau send slope analyses across some time series data at a handful of different sites along the Colorado River for a handful of different water quality ions. So all of this data that we're going to be starting off with here is data that you produced in the uh, one tidying water quality data RMD. So the first thing we're going to do after, of course, loading in all of our necessary packages is load in that water quality object. So I'm going to call it WQ to follow along with the lesson plan. We're going to use read RDS to load it in. This data should be stored in our data folder and we should have named it tidied full WQ, I believe. Let's see if this works. Awesome. As we've loaded in this data set, I actually want to immediately perform some simple tidying steps to subset this entire data set to just low flow months and then get the annual median low flow value across all of the years at that site. So if you're following along with the lesson plan, I am about to just create what we called the low flow object, I believe. Let's see here. Yes. So I am going to just copy and paste this chunk of code from the lesson plan. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm first, of course, using that water quality object that I'm creating two new columns, month and year based on that date column that already exists in the water quality data set. Using that month column I just created, I'm filtering to only include um, in the Western US, typically low flows occur in, and when, what we mean by that is literally when um, streams are at their lowest discharge. Uh, that typically occurs in, uh, in late summer and early fall. So we're just filtering out you know, the months from late summer, August through uh, 11 November. Then we're using the group by and summarize to uh, identify for every site parameter combo, the median value um, for every year in our data set. And then we're using this arrange function at the very bottom there to make sure that our data is ordered properly so that um, from one row to the next, we are increasing in years. So I'm going to run that. Let's go ahead and look at it to make sure it looks the way I'm envisioning it to. And in fact, it does. We have for every site um, and parameter combination across years, that median value um, in that certain ions concentration. So with this data set, we want to answer the research question, is there a significant trend in concentrations through time uh, during low flow periods for all of our sites and all of our parameters in this data set, right? Um, so we have a handful. Um, in other words, we want to perform our send slope test on however many combinations there are in this data set. We could do this in practically a zillion different ways, but today we will be using nesting and mapping. So this is the data set that contains all of our combinations, but let's just go through the motions of performing this send slope test on just one of these combos. And I am going to use the Dolores River um, and calcium as our example. So I'm going to call this CA for calcium, Dolores. And what that's going to be is just a subset of our low flow data set. I'm going to filter so that our basin name equals Dolores. And the parameter must equal calcium.
Well, our object, C.A. Dolores, has zero observations, and I know that that isn't actually true for the Dolores River. Hmm. Maybe I got the name wrong. Let's look at Dolores again. Um, or just look at our low flow data. Maybe I got the name of the, no, parameter, calcium, basin. Let's look up the names in our data set here. Unique, low flow, basin. Oh, I spelled Dolores wrong. Classic. Okay, Dolores. Okay, we're back on track. So now we've got an object called CA Dolores. And just to clear things up here, I'm going to remove this misspelled object from my environment so we can pretend like I didn't do that. Beautiful. Okay, so now we have, what we've got here is um, just a subset of our water quality data, um, essentially just at our USGS site along the Dolores River, calcium, the uh, median concentration across years. So now we're going to perform the SENS slope analyses, which uh, takes essentially the Mann-Kendall test a step further. The Mann-Kendall test is a non-parametric statistical test that you're able to use to detect whether or not a trend exists in time series data. Uh, so that would be helpful here, but we'd also like to know not only whether or not there's a trend, but the magnitude and direction of that trend, which is where Sun's slope kind of has a, um, a bigger benefit, I guess, for our needs. So not only does it perform the Mann-Kendall test within this function, but also tells us whether or not that slope is positive or the trend rather, whether or not it's negative. So we're going to use the send slope function, and I'm going to call the model output of this just Dolores trend. And then we're going to use that send slope function. The only thing that you need to provide it is an actual vector of all of our time series data. So if we look at our uh, calcium Dolores, we've got this column of our information ordered by year. All we have to do is pull that in for send slope to work. So I'm gonna do CA Dolores dollar sign and select that concentration column. So let's run that and let's look at the output. If we just go ahead and view the output of this object, what you see is a handful of information, but the two most useful bits of info from this test are the p-value, uh, which tells us whether or not our results are significant, and then the slope here at the bottom, which tells us the direction and magnitude of uh, that trend. So if we're using an alpha of 0.05, it's quite clear that there is not a significant trend found in the data set. Um, so not super interesting. Uh, but to move on, the other piece that I want to point out is the way that this data is stored is not particularly um, intuitive, I guess you could say. It's not very storage friendly. It's not super um, stackable, let's say if we wanted to, which we will be doing, um, performing this sense slope across multiple places, or pardon, yeah, places and parameters. We want to be able to kind of stack this information nicely. So to get around the bizarre structure of these models results, we can use another function called tidy, which was designed to essentially deal with this issue of having model results very often stored in these ugly lists. And what tidy does is it pulls all of this information in this list and converts it into a single row of information, uh, information, blech, 
and then it's structured as a data frame. So we are going to use the tidy function. I'm going to call it tidy Dolores. And I'm going to just use tidy and then give it the model results that we want to tidy up. Oop, spelled it wrong. And what we find now is something that is much prettier, much easier for us to play around with and manipulate in the future. Uh, plot twist, very annoyingly, and I'm not sure why exactly, but this tidy function, if you remember, one of the, the biggest pieces of information for the send slope is the slope, is not included uh, in this data frame. So we're going to need to tack that information on in a different way. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. But here I'm going to um, essentially create a new column. We'll call it slope. And we want to fill that column in with here it's listing out all of the information contained in the list. We want to uh, fill it with our estimates, which is actually that send slope value. So now we've got the slope. As we can, we can double check, they're the same. We did it right. But thinking about the future, we want to be able to do this uh, across multiple site parameter combinations. So how about we convert all of this gunk into a single function? And I'm going to call this function the tidier sense. So the first thing is we're going to give it a name. We're going to make sure that it's function. We're going to perform this function on our time series data. Here I'm just going to use the word data as a placeholder for future objects that we want to perform this function on. The very first step is, let's call it the model. The model is going to be our sends slope functions output when performing sends slope on our data set. Then we immediately want to tidy the results of that output. So we'll use the tidy function on our model. And then, much like the code up here, we're going to immediately tack on a slope column, which will be equal to the model outputs information stored in its estimates. Because this is the final object in our function, we don't need to technically use return, and instead the function will know that what we want as its output is the results of this kind of manipulation we're doing here. So let's test it out. I'm gonna run that. And I'm gonna just call this test case. What we want to do is run our tidier sends function on our time series data. So we're going to replace data essentially when we run this model, or pardon me, run this function. We're going to use our CA Dolores concentration data. So this test case should in theory look identical to this tidy Dolores. But let's see if that's the case. Yay! Uh, using a function, we now have a tidy row containing our statistical results of running the send slope test on our Dolores calcium data. In the next video, we're going to use the code steps that we just outlined and developed. Uh, but across all of those parameter site combinations of our water quality data set using mapping and nesting. So stay tuned.